Good morning, party people. I am still in the White Plains, New York City area. Probably tomorrow I'll be going to Brooklyn, and Sunday I'll be going to Lower Connecticut, maybe a little bit further in Connecticut. If you need my help, call or text. That That is sadly the only way I could track uh, communication with people. Uh, yesterday, I seen a, a guy that had a PCV issue. He did the PCV, then he started the car. It wouldn't stay running, stuff like that. You got to watch those post-PCV problems videos if you have stuff like that. Also helped the guy with his uh, BMW, did the front brakes on it, going to bleed those uh, brake system. Today, I looked at a 964 guy, man, those cars. They just don't have a lot of stuff broke. You know, those are great cars. Anyway, I'm going to be around the uh, New York area today and tomorrow. When I leave here, I'm going to Pennsylvania. Then I'm going to Maryland. Then I'm going to Virginia. Then I'm going to North Carolina. Then I'm going to Georgia, around the Atlanta area. Then I'll be working my way back home. When I leave Atlanta, I'm probably going to be on a fast track home. I'll be dragging a trailer and stuff like that. So not going to be making many stops after that. Hopefully, I'll stay home a couple weeks, then get back on the road, maybe go out west and maybe the southwest. Then I'll go back home, maybe for a week or two, head back out east, when I say east, probably close to Ohio, uh, do a couple of manual swaps around there, Chicago area, and then I'll probably call it uh, a winter, you know, end of October, first of November get back home before it starts snowing in places so that's where I'm at that's what I'm doing thanks for watching hope you enjoy today's video welcome to hanging out with Robert that's me this video contains things that I tinker with throughout the day for step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks you can click on the link in the comment section below I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days after that you can view it through my patreon account this video also have tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. So, thank you very much for watching. Day five of the, or at least day four, spilled coke in the stairwell at the Holiday Inn. I told them about it two days ago, but it doesn't seem to be something that they can take care of. Kicking off my Tinker Day pick apart. Fredericksburg, Virginia, foreign and domestic. Let's go check out what they got. Wow, look like they've cleaned this dump up a little bit. Cars are still on the ground, which is not good. But at least you could walk around here. Last time I was here, you really couldn't even walk around the place. Progress, always good. See if I can find a car. They have roads now, 201. I guess it's 202. 203. Let's keep going. Hey, little butterfly. 205. 206. Don't see no Volvos yet. 20. Ah, there's a Volvo down there. Let me go see what that is. Looks like. Oh, here's another one here. These are P2s. Guess I could probably do oh a P2 T5. Somebody want that sticker? It's here. That looks like a P80. Let's see if it's got anything worth getting. All-wheel drive. Now this car looks well maintained. If I'm gonna get a power steering pump, it's gonna be from a car like this that looks well maintained. Let me go look a little more, see if I find any other jewels out here. Got this AC compressor out. I took the fan out, cut the belt, took the 412s out, unplugged the wire to it, wiggled it out this way, took that wire harness loose. The dryer's in the way a little bit, but got it out anyway. Let me get this power steering pump and check my list and get out of here. Here it cleaves. They had a good rain yesterday, and this trunk is bone dry. So, we're going to turn the car around and see if it stays dry after the next rain. 
first thing I'm gonna do here is change this ABS module. He's getting an intermittent ABS light. He does not have cruise control. We worked on that for a solid day last time I was here. But I'm gonna remix this ABS video. I get my ABS modules from Midwest ABS. Let's get started. I'm gonna start off by saying I do not recommend you try to fix these modules yourself. I've tried it a few times, never worked out for me. There's probably 43 points of solder in there. One guy told me if the solder is not equally balanced, you got more solder on one point than you have on another, that throws the unit off. Don't know how true that is, that's what I was told. I've butchered up the cases on them. Once you do that, these guys really don't want to use those as cores because when they send them to uh, particular people, those particular people don't want an ABS module that looks like Frankenstein chewed it open with a chainsaw. So, I don't recommend you try to do them yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you the quickest way I've learned to get them off and in one piece and do your best not to strip those bolts. I do not recommend torquing those bolts on at 48 foot pounds. Those are not lug nuts. They're just tiny little bolts. Snug those things down, you'll be good to go. Let's get started. Open the hood. If you don't know how to do that, man, you may want to back away from this job. This is a 98 S70 turbo. You know it's turbo because it's got this turbo charge piping. First thing I do is disconnect this hose there. You don't have to. I disconnect the mass airflow sensor. I take this clamp loose here. I don't use a flat tip screwdriver. I use seven millimeter. I pull this air intake tube off. I pull the air box out. Make sure nothing's attached to it. There's a turbo valve that's sometimes hooked on the back. Undo your little wires off of your coil. Lift this thing up and out of the way. Lift up the front of the box, push it a little bit toward the passenger side and the box come out. To remove the air box, you pop it up, push it a little bit toward the passenger side, comes right out, set it out of the way. Now you can see the ABS module plug there. Sometimes I move this out of my way a little bit, sometimes I don't. Just depends on how crowded this stuff feels down here. That's your turbo control valve. Be careful you don't damage nothing on that. It's a little bit weird connection there. Anyway, if you look down here, let me get some light on the subject. There's a latch over here on the side of this ABS module. You push that tab in, you work this up, and as you massage it up, it'll normally pull the latches off of the connector this one however is broken so if it's broken you can see these two little tabs here you pull those out a little bit wiggle the cable up a little bit pull them out a little more you may need to get needle nose pliers on them or something here's a latch here's a latch work those out as you work those out this connector will come up and off of the module these sliders come out about that far the connector comes up and off of the module then you have power leads on the side of the module you squeeze the tabs on top of it tab here tab there squeeze those and wiggle and unplug that from the module it is now unplugged next you reach under there and get the four screws that's holding the module in place. The module is attached to the controller like this. You have four screws on the bottom of it. Those are E5s. Sometimes 530 seconds can get them. Wouldn't really recommend that. Use the tool that Midwest ABS sent you. If you ordered a replacement module from them, you're gonna return the core. It will come with the proper tool. Here is my E5 bit and my quarter inch. 
I reach under the unit, get that seated on the screw properly, break them loose. I normally hear them crackle and pop like lug nuts that are on there so tight. I don't think you need to put them back that tight, just snug them down. But this is the tool I reach under there and get that loose with. I do my best to move everything out of the way like you see here to get at these screws. The first screw, you could feel it with your finger, is about right there. You set this thing on here squarely, get it seated on there, and then you pop that thing loose. It's loose already. Go back there to the next one, pop it loose. I can see it. I can see my socket getting on it. Sometime I turn my hand down that way, I got that one loose. The next two I can't see, but they're blind. I moved the shift cable around the way I needed to to get this socket on those two and pop them loose. Then I take the tool off of my wrench, put them on there, screw them out by my finger. Be careful not to drop this. If you drop this tool, it'll roll over the transmission, will probably land on the subframe. You may never see it again. Paint it yellow, do whatever you gotta do, just don't drop it. All four screws did break loose pretty easy. I do remember putting this in a year or so ago for him. So this unit, I think he got it out of the salvage yard. Now I could twist them off by hand, being careful not to drop the tool. And once I get all four out, the unit will slide off of the controller. It has several pins in the controller. Six if it's a normal unit seven if it's got tracks so let me unscrew these and get this module out of here I got all four screws out they look like that once the screws are out the module just comes out like that as you can see this one has seven pins it's an ABS unit with tracks this one was redone by that Remax organization and the junkyard thing but it's not chewed up so it'll be a good core now let me say this it is easy to strip these screws I just stripped one two weeks ago I didn't have my e5 I was trying with my 530 seconds it's stripped if you strip it is one of two things you could do you could talk to Maddie Mo about how to get it out I don't recommend that or you can take the entire controller off, flip it over. Now that I have the unit out, I'm gonna go ahead and put the replacement one in. This is the one I got from Midwest ABS. I'm gonna flip it over, plug it in, got one screw in. So that's how far your latches are when your your latches are out when you're connector starts to grab push them in little bit by little bit pushing down on your your connector if your top is broke it's all the way in I got that one behind there plugged in we should be good to go put that useless thing back on there to protect the wires now we'll go ahead and put the air box in put that snorkel back on there Hook up your mass airflow sensor. Take it for a test drive. Now this car is throwing a code. Occasional running lean. Normally air problem. Running rich. That hose looks bad. And I felt around that back side of that one. That one feels bad. We're going to pull those off here in a few minutes. Give them a good inspection. Looks like the clamps are too tight. That tears up those hoses. They leak air. You get codes. It's always easy to check your air filter when you got the box out. It's got a cannon filter in here. Doesn't look like it has any of the oil on it. However, it looks about 25% dirty, so we're going to send it. Get the air box back in. That pin goes through that rubber grommet there in the side of the fender well. 
and then you got a pin here a pin near the bottom of the air box guides in and holds on to those so work that thing back in that way and push it down you'll be good to go and you can clip this back on the back of the air box if you want see that clip there it clips right here on the back of the air box under the mass airflow sensor that's it everything's back together I'll start the car the ABS light may still be on for a few seconds once the car starts moving gets up to 10 miles an hour the ABS light should be cleared if it's not cleared likely has a different problem something in the wiring in the car or a bad sensor also if you strip one of them screws check the comments box below now or soon I'll post a video on how to get the entire controller out modulating unit and show you how I got that screw out in the past by removing that entire thing so hope this helped thanks for watching the link to uh, Midwest ABS is in the comments below if you have ABS problems you will need a level 2 scanner or a Volvo class scanner to read the codes 95 times out of a hundred the problem is with the module it was built broke one of those built broke situations I sell t-shirts I should have put the ABS module on there too now the first symptom is you may lose cruise control you will get intermittent ABS light. Second symptom, you may get Trax lights along with ABS lights. Third symptom, you will have intermittent speedometer errors. Your speedometer will start going out. Last but not least, you will have the speedometer and odometer go out. Normally after two years. It's a $110, $125 problem. Fix it, man. I mean, good lord, people. Just get it fixed. Get a unit from Midwest ABS. The link's in the comments. Replace that thing. It takes me like a half hour to replace it. Shouldn't take you no more than two hours. Okay? Just fix it. It's built broke. We're going to start the car. ABS light may, may not stay on. It was intermittent. It is off. It says it needs service. We're going to drive it five, ten minutes. Make sure the ABS light doesn't come on. Get some AC going on here. That thing is flashing for some reason. Forgot to get that fan motor while I was out there. Cleve is concerned that possibly his AC is not cooling when he first starts the car. I got that temp gauge out of my toolbox and my car is at 120. Now it's at 110. We're gonna go for a little ride, five minutes. See how low that thing goes down. Oh man, it takes a while for that window to roll up. Let's uh, watch it every five minutes. We are at 329. It's already down to 100. Let's see how thing that quick. I got a set of facial vents. So it should be blowing right on the face. The AC's on. It flipped itself to recycle. And the fan's on auto. Hey, that thing's rolling around. Looks like we're already down to 90 in one minute. Car thinks the temp outside is 97. We're at two minutes, I think, and we're still. What did that thing say? Almost 90. Put some pressure on it to get it up. It's down to 80. 30 seconds later, we're still at 80. One minute later, we're gonna cruise around for about four or five minutes. See how low it gets. We're three minutes in, the fan kicked down a little bit. Looks like it's about 72 degrees on that thing. Not as cold as some would like, but it is cold. Passenger side is reaching 70. Driver's side, we're gonna give it a minute, see where it stabilizes at. I hit override on the fan, put it on max. Looks like we're about 68 over here on the driver's side. Let's see if it gets any lower by the time we make it back. We've been driving five minutes. Got down to 70, ambient still read 91. So that's like 21 degrees. I think that thing should get 30 degree difference, but that's where it's at. 
Sad to say, I am not real big on servicing AC myself anymore. It just doesn't get as cold. It's hooking up those cans with those gauges is a hack job at best. So, if you don't know how to use a vacuum pump, draw it down, hook it back up, pump it back up, I say leave the thing alone. Let me go see if I can get my scanner out here, hook it back up to this car, see if I can get this thing to give me some kind of cruise control airflow. C70, it doesn't go away after it starts whining. Left, right, left, right, left. We're going to see if changing the pump is going to clear that. This is the early 2001 C70. We're going to be replacing the power steering pump on it. It's either got a problem with the rack or a problem with the power steering pump. It winds excessively when you turn it. Looks like somebody's replaced the uh, alternator with a reman alternator. I'm not sure if it's aftermarket or not, but it's reman. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is move this out of the way. Unplug that up and out of the way. Second thing I'm going to do is disconnect the power steering return or supply from the reservoir to the pump here. That's a 7 millimeter. I'm going to put something under it so that the oil doesn't run into the alternator. Then I'm going to reach down there and untent the serpentine belt. Take that serpentine belt loose. I'm also going to unclip this from the power steering bracket. Move it out of the way. I'm not going to disconnect it. Just going to move it out of the way. This is a pretty easy task. You pull this hose. You pull that hose. You pull the serpentine belt. And you take three bolts loose from the bracket. The uh, one at, I say, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and 11 o'clock. And that pump comes right out with the pulley and this bracket. Those three bolts are 12 millimeter. I'm going to take the cap off of this just to get me a little bit more room to work with my tools. I went out to the salvage yard, found the cleanest Volvo with a compatible part on it that I could find. You can go to a parts website look up the part number make sure they match this one i believe came from a 01 cross country v70 xc it was the cleanest car i could find there usually that's the best maintained car you can see that the supply hose was leaking that's very common those things need to be replaced probably every 15 years so i'm going to take this one off put this one on see if the noise goes away I normally use a long flat tip screwdriver to get down in here to unlatch this clip so I can pull this box top off this side the clip is missing I unhooked the hose got that out of the way that gives me a little more room to reach my bolts and find the serpentine belt tensioner down here put my tool on that tensioner and untension that uh, serpentine belt it looks like it's the kind that uses the 14 millimeter on the tensioner itself so I'm gonna get the longest 14 millimeter I have put it on that front of that tensioner bolt turn that I think clockwise to the right so it loses the tensioner on that then I'm gonna slide the belt off that thing has a long swing I can also lift this up get this out of the way if you want to do that this coolant bottle and this power steering uh, reservoir they come up together the return hose comes up here feeds the system here the supply hose goes out the bottom feeds this over here I prefer not to take this stuff loose they told me they had this hose to replace this one that's seeping couldn't find it so I'm going to try to leave that stuff together. Reach down there and knock that tensioner off. You can actually pull this stuff up as a unit. Be careful when you pull this up. Once you get it up high enough, you unplug the sensor under it. Lay all this stuff on the engine still hooked up. 
you pick it up about this high you reach down there unplug the sensor and then lay the stuff on top of the engine it should be fine this is how I lay the stuff on the engine that thing is hooked together there it's kind of a bear to uh, get that stuff unconnected and then remade it I try to leave it together there was some fluid on this plug connector I'm assuming it was power steering fluid and not coolant coolant looks fine but this bottom of this reservoir is wet so next thing we're going to do is get the tension off of that roller with a 14 like I said I'm going to roll it I believe it's clockwise uh, to the right to get the tension off of it to slide that belt loose pay close attention to how that belt goes around there it needs to go back the way it is now if you don't see how it's on there make yourself a pattern or something you get confused when you're trying to go back on and you sit there wasting a lot of time so don't do that got the 14 on there I'm going to turn it with a tightening motion and that should release the tension from there when that thing gets the belt off that thing goes back pretty far so don't get yourself stuck with the tool I wouldn't put it back no further than that so pull that forward get the belt loose it's actually got to stop there I'm gonna knock the belt off and let the tension loose off of it it doesn't have a way you could pin it on I knocked the belt off at the tensioner see how far back that tool went so goes back pretty far now I'm gonna loop the belt off of that and take this line off take that line off get these four bolts three bolts inside the pump got the clamp loose I'm gonna work that hose off put my finger in it raise the hose up and try to trap it in the uh, liner up there maybe I won't lose that much fluid but it is what it is I have the hose trapped up there not saying that's the best thing to do that's what I did I did lose some fluid now I'm gonna take that bolt out and once I get that out I'm gonna move that over just a little bit then I'll take these bolts in it that are holding it to the bracket I see some writing on here stating that this is a remanufactured unit uh, maybe it wasn't remanufactured well but anyway it's coming off before you take these hoses off you want to avoid the system being contaminated with debris so you spray this stuff down with brakes parts cleaner brush it off with a nylon brush wipe it off with a rag do what you can to avoid dirt from falling down in there all right the last bolt is right here where my fingertip is I pulled that one out already pulled that one out already when I pull it last one out doesn't matter how you take them out you, the unit just slides forward and comes out then to get it back in I can clearly see that top one so I start with this top bolt right there I put that in there start it in don't tighten it then I hit this next one down here on the front don't tighten it then I get that hidden one back there so I'm gonna tighten this up put the lines on see how I tuck that other line over there and then get that hose down and hook that reservoir back up serpentine belt went on with these thank you Lord the clamp here sprung so I got to find another clamp to replace that one I'm gonna go ahead and lay this stuff back over here you can see that stuff is leaking out of the bottle and I'm gonna plug this in when I bring that down and replace that clamp I'll be all done top off the reservoir whatever I lost not much. I replaced that clamp right there you put it on tight enough so that you can't twist the hose but not too tight that it cuts into the hose a lot of problems people have with clamps too tight cutting into the hose got this back on I'm gonna put this vent tube back on check the level make sure it's up to the minimum mark at least before I start the car and test it out check the level we're below the cold so we're below the add so I'm not gonna start this car until I get some fluid in here 
make sure you put the right amount of fluid and the right type of fluid for that pump so you don't mess it up. We're having a problem with this car tire holding there. Visible bend in the rim. Uh, I'm going to look see if they got another one of these wheels at the salvage yard. I think I did see one. It's a 17 inch rim. So I'll look at the ones down there, grab the best one I could see, and bring it back to them so they can get this tire swapped over. Heck, that thing needs an alignment. That tire is dead anyway. Sure Contact RX Continentals. These are the tools I use for the job. The task at hand, 12 millimeter, a quarter to three eighths adapter, seven millimeter, eight millimeter, because I switched to a conventional clamp, short extension, 17 millimeter, probably 16 is the right tool to use to get that uh, pressure line loose, 14 millimeter to throw the serpentine belt tensioner, the ratchet wrench for the 12 to get the bolts out of the pump, flat tip screwdriver to get the ECU clap off. Not sure why I use that, but may it help you get uh, something out of the way on that thing. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.